Welcome back to the Business Freedom Podcast. This is part three of how to convert leads at the highest level. And uh, Dan Jones is uh, finishing out his schooling of us on lead conversion and lead management. And it really is where the rubber meets the road in real estate. So uh, stay tuned for part three. If you haven't already shared the Business Freedom Podcast, please do it now. This is members only content. And so that is my ask of you. Just get the word out about the Business Freedom Podcast. And uh, also leave us a five-star review. It's super helpful when you leave us five-star reviews. And uh, don't leave us anything less than a five-star. If it's less than five-star, send me a message and tell me why. And uh, much love and respect. And uh, stay tuned for part three of how to convert leads at the highest level. This is where the rubber meets the road in your business. Much love and respect. So we're getting um, towards the end. So these are some action items I want to leave everyone, uh, everyone with. So going deep and following up on every single appointment, right? Squeeze that lemon. That's what Laurie says all the time. I love that saying. So I just imagine just squeezing a lemon and then you don't stop there. You squeeze it again. I guarantee you get more juice out of it, right? And we don't need to spend more. We just need to go deeper. You know, agents, we don't have to go on triple the amount of appointments or double the amount of appointments. Go deeper with what you have, right? Number two, office language. Tracking, set, met, signed. Everyone speaks that language. Really simple, but it's a total buy-in, right? Get leads under 100, and if you have re you're hesitant to do that, it's the biggest monkey off your back because those 30, 40, 50 people you get rid of are the people you're going to chase for the next year, two, three years, and a few of them might do it, but if we spend all that time you're doing, you know, following up on people who probably aren't serious, right, and spend it on more of the right now stuff and people you need to be following up with, you're going to sell a lot more houses, right? And then finally, marketing plan. You have to know what's working in your business. So going back to 2015, when I very first sat down with Lars, and uh, <laughs> I want to find it one day, and I'll give you a copy, Lars. I had everything, single thing I was spending on a monthly basis, I would write it out. Next month, I would rewrite it out again just to make my mind focus on what I was spending, and I want to write it out again. And I just kept stapling it and stapling it and stapling it. When I met with Lars, he's like, how's this working? I'm like, I don't know, not that good. How about this? How about this? That's when we like made everything transparent and started tracking and really understood what our ROI was. But if you don't have a marketing plan to really understand that and you're not tracking your appointments, how many leads you're getting, calls per lead, what you're converting, what you're not converting, you're, I want to say you're going to have a struggling year, but you're not going to be profitable. And the people who are with you, they're going to struggle as well, right? So besides, uh, besides that, We'll open it up to Q&A. So our team is over here if anyone has any questions for them. Um, but I just want to leave you guys with simplify, consistency, squeeze that lemon, and dig deep. Dan. Dan, um, my question is, in, in the uh, item you had there, recycle every lead, mm. What's your recommendation as to how to actually implement that, like on a nuts and bolts level, so, so the prospect gets turned down from the agent on OT, or I don't know how you run that. Um, we're just, we're, we're literally requiring every lead before we put a tag on our trash to be recycled, or what does that look like? So the biggest one in the objection list that we have is, for example, let's use a buyer lead, that they say, for example, uh, we ha I have an agent. There's so many objections you can handle. I have an agent lead. And what we found, at least 50% of people who say they have an agent truly don't have an agent. They had somebody who unlocked a door. They have a part-time friend of a friend who can only show homes on Friday and Saturdays, whatever the case is. But if you struggle with that sort of lead and you're not 100% clear that that lead is truly garbage and you just weren't able to convert it, even if it's a listing appointment, Right? Hey, we have an agent, we're signing paperwork on Friday, and you can shoot everything at them to get that appointment, they still say no. We know they're signing, they're signing Friday. We have three, four more days to convert that and get face-to-face. -face. Why not give it to someone else? Right? So for a buyer call, let's just say it's a, it's a yard sign call. They had kids crying in the background. You call it back 20 minutes later. You know, they're still in a rush to get you off the phone and say, hey, I have an agent, I have an agent. Okay, well, we do. We'll put it into Boomtown. Right, so you can add it to Boomtown and use like their phone number at hotmail.com, call it a yard sign and put the real phone number in there so we can continue calling that number. Right? We don't just give up on it and turn it down. Right? You have to go deep with that, but putting it back into the CRM or just sending it back to the ISA 
or if there's two listening partners, send it to the other. If there's no ISA, back and forth until we convert it. If you feel like you didn't 100% determine that this person will not do business with our company, give it to someone else. Good question. I love that part of that. Uh, just had a quick question about, does your team do uh, daily new, new business development calls? If so, um, if they're limited to 100 leads, who are they calling? So we have, good God, um, we have too many leads probably coming in. I get it. Uh, we could bring on four people right now and make them extremely busy. Um, everyone has their own agenda in regards to when they're making dials, right? So everyone's required at least four hours in office a week making dials to the dialer, four hours either in office or out of the office, and then four additional hours in the office doing some sort of prospect. Uh, so that's how that world looks, um, looks for us there. Who else has questions? So this is a guy, uh, what, last three, 175, 225, 275 this year, units. Got out of production about a year ago, runs one of the most profitable businesses that I've seen, um, now puts all his time and energy into his teammates. So uh, you guys better fill up the rest of the time with questions. We have 11 minutes. So Dan, just wondering about the emails that you're sending out. Um, the seller and the buyer emails, there was four there. Looks like two of them go to the agents after the appointment. Who, the other two before the appointment, that, where do they go and who do they come from? Let me re-explain that one more time so maybe I can do a good job there. So let's say I'm ISA, I'm setting an appointment for, let's say for Lars. So that would go to the agent listing appointment and we would also copy listings at Mohun Carolinas. So we have one email address everything goes to and Lars' the listing agent would be the only agent who got that appointment. Um, and then that's when the chain starts. So the next day, um, Sri usually comes back in, um, and then that, the secondary follow-up email after that appointment would go out at that point. All right, and then large would be copied on it. The same with listing at my home Carolina. It's the same email that went out gets responded to. So it starts that chain on that one appointment. So the email, the first one before the <clears throat> appointment, has the information in it for that appointment? Correct. And the second one is more of a questionnaire. Set, met, sign, next what steps. What happened kind of thing. Set, met, sign, and next steps. Cool. Okay. I've never used one of these. That's very interesting. Okay. Um, <laughs> I didn't like Hello. <laughs> um, okay. Can you walk me through, once a lead comes in, it goes to your ISAs, and they make the appointments for your agents. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, so... Now we have sh we're shifting over towards our ISA team handling all incoming leads. Uh, but before that, um, Realtor.com would basically come through. It would go to two or three agents. Somebody would claim it. Um, now we're trying to move to a model of having our agents only focus on follow-up, new business development on leads we haven't contacted, so they're just staying in the dialer. Um, to get back to your original question as well on who they're dialing, we have yard sign lists of people that we've missed in the past, old Zillow leads we're never able to get in touch with, leads that have come in, uh, but we're moving towards that model of ISAs handling majority of our leads that come in, mm -hmm. uh, but still the same process, ISA handles lead or agent handles lead. How many ISAs do you have and how many leads approximately do you have per month coming in? We had too many last month. Uh, we cut down on Facebooks. So we were kind of in the, still that two, three month test run. Um, we were roughly about six and a quarter last month. Two ISAs, going to be three here fairly soon. Can you talk about how you break up the listing, the listing side versus the buyer side? Do you have a listing agent that specializes in that? Do they do both? Can you talk through kind of what your thoughts on that is? Yeah, so we don't, on our team, I like everyone to do at least, <laughs> at least 30 transactions before they do uh, anything on the listing side. Um, so with the whole, you know, who does what, we do have a few agents that focus more on the listing side, but they do work with buyers as well. Um, in a perfect world, we would like to make that shift over. Most of our team still doesn't mind to work with buyers if they're in their, you know, area geographically where they live, you know, so it's not like we're only focused on listings. I know some teams do that. I get that. Uh, but if it's a buyer in my neighborhood or like, in my, you know, five, ten minute drive from me, three, four hundred thousand, I'm personally not going to say no. So we, we do have a little bit of separation there, but as our team comes up on that 30 year mark, uh, 30 homes, so that kind of that year mark with our team, 
we do allow them to do sphere of influence, past client, and if they're just knocking out of the ballpark, guess what? Step up to the plate and we'll get you on some listing appointments. Hey, Dan. Hey. <laughs> My name's Nate. Uh, I'm a realtor from Philadelphia area. I had a, a two-part question. You briefly mentioned, uh, you know, in that initial conversation, two red flags and you're not showing them a house, I think you said. Um, could you go into examples of those red flags? And then also, sounds like you, you know, started right out with showing houses. So, you know, you'll, you'll go right out and, and show them. At what point do you then have a, a buyer consultation? So our buyer consultation, we want that very day, right? That's the whole idea around question two of AR one through four, one through five. So that question two is time, right? Do you have time to talk, you know, to see additional homes is what we set it up as, right? But that home run appointment establishes that sit down to do that buyer consultation, right? So our goal is to have a buyer consultation at every single showing appointment. If it's either at the house, if because like for example, Clay on our team, he lives a little bit further out, so there are no Starbucks, Panera Breads, you know, real good places for those. So he does the majority of his right there at the house, right? Our ultimate goal is to get him to a Starbucks, Panera Bread, to sit down and just listen to them, build rapport and be their best friend for that 15, 20, 30 minutes and understand what they're looking for, right? So we can service them at a high level. Um, the first part of your question was, Yes, red flags on the pre-qualification. Um, so we're not just hustling out to go show every single house. So the three questions is credit. So if somebody doesn't know their credit, it's probably not that good, right? This is something you just know, right? Last time you pulled it, right? Well, what was it when you last time you pulled it? What was it? What did it say? Why was it this, right? So if that's a yellow red flag, we're probably not going to show you the house, right? If it's a yellow flag, yeah, I pulled it, you know, it was like 680. How long ago was that? Six months ago. Have you bought a car? Have you done anything since? Nope, okay, that, that's fair for us for now. We're still gonna get you in touch with our lender, right? Number two is how long have you been at your current job? You gotta be really careful on people who are 1099 employees who might not be able to buy for 18 months because they just started their business, they're doing extremely well, but we're not showing you that house, you can't qualify, right? And then how long have you been, um, no, excuse me, how much uh, do you have for your down payment, right? Because some people are like, yeah, are you willing to do a down payment? You know, when you hear them, like, yeah, I got $7,000 saved. You're like, oh, wow, we're not showing you this house, that's not good, you know? So those are, those are our three, but we'll give them the appointment up front. I have no problem giving the appointment because you can always take it away. I just like to have that commitment up front. Dan, just to clarify, you, you had mentioned max 100. You mean you meant 100 leads in their CRM at a Correct. given time, and, and then if there's more than that, they're getting put into the group account. Your lead list, to clarify, you said are older leads that are on a, a dial list that your agents are prospecting to. How, can, I missed something you said over there. How many inbound leads per month, maybe per agent, do you recommend coming in to be yeah, able to so properly handle? Absolutely. So with us, um, if you take Facebook out this past month, because we spent quite a bit on Facebook just for that test run, um, so a lot of people are doing that. So we're looking for like one more lead source moving forward. If you take those out, uh, we're probably in that 40-ish range. 40 per, per month per agent. Yeah, per agent. And then, which is probably a little bit too many as well. The reason is... So if it's just a general pay-per-click lead, that's not, I mean, I don't like the idea of pay-per-click leads, right, because they're like the, the, the lowest of the low. But with a realtor.com lead, you don't need to talk to too many hand raiser people or to have 40 sign calls come in. If you can't convert three, 40 sign, or three out of 40 sign calls, that's a problem, right? We had a little bit additional, but 40 is probably a good healthy, 30 to 40 is probably a good healthy number. If, they're actually, if you include that in sign calls as well, you can include that because there are people who are reaching out to you. Right? I get some people might not qualify, some people have agents, but you have 20 other people that reached out to you about real estate. Hey, Dan, as far as the uh, blast, when a lead comes in, you said you do three days that they blast. We do 12 days, and then we put them in a fishing pond after that, and they're supposed to be contacted three times a day. So what do you guys do for those three days? And, so do, you, and do you recommend three days or do you think we should go longer with that or not? Because like I said, we do 12 right now until we, for our attempted contact. Yeah, I like that question. So I think a lot of people would agree 12 is too many. I've seen a lot of people with three and I've seen four and five. Once you get over five days, the odds of that lead being properly worked get really slim, right? So three by three, uh, we do four texts, four calls in the first 24 hours, right? With an eight by eight and kind of that three day vision you know, eight, eight calls, eight texts. Um, is that daily for the three days? 
or just the first day? You know, so we, for daily, yeah, first 24 hours, four by four, four calls, four texts, right? You can do more. No one's going to, you know, get upset if you call it seven, eight times from a couple different numbers, but minimum requirement's kind of four and four, and then we're looking for eight and eight on the three days. Okay. You can do more, but that's just something we came up with. Day two, you know, if you hit two, then four, then one, then, you know, but we're just looking for that eight and eight. Um, so when you say a hundred leads, I have Boomtown, so they have like the hot nurture watch. Does that mean the hundred leads divide into those three categories that your company's going to buy? And then the archive section for me right now, because I'm a solo agent, has a, you know, 600 people, um, and I just hired a new agent. If he does the three day cycle and he doesn't convert someone or get an appointment, does he then put into his own archive? How do you combine those? Like, Yeah, that's, um, that's a good one. So I mean, there's a few things you can do. You could create one account, for example, but to get to your original question, the 100, that would be your watch, nurture, and hot. You don't want more than that. So it's crazy hard to keep up, and you're probably keeping up with people you don't need to be keeping up with. Um, you could create a totally different account to put those in. Uh, we have one we just call buyer leads. So any lead over three days, the entire team has access to it, right? It gets uploaded, our virtual assistant goes in daily, pulls all those leads. So from day four until 25, they're under quali uh, which would be under Brendan Qualify in our team. On day 25, they come back to me, and then they're under Dan Qualify. So we know they're a little bit older. So for a newer agent, they'll have at it on the 25 plus days as we start to get, you know, um, a little bit more familiar with the system, prospecting, get a little bit better on the phone. Um, but, I mean, just with the two of you, you still need something in place, you know, some sort of lead management policy to say, hey, you had this lead for X amount of time, but given it's just you two, and if you're still working with buyers, you gotta give yourself a shot at it at a certain point in time. You can't just let it sit there, because if you, depending on how many leads you have coming in, you're gonna have things just sitting all over the place that you're, you'll have access to it because you're probably you know, on the administrative side, right? But you need to make that clear with your agent as well, saying, hey, after four days, it's game on, right? Same with the lead that you get. If you're still working with buyers, it has to be uniform across the board. You can't just hog your, you know, keep your leads over here. He doesn't have access to them, access to them but they need to go into some sort of dialer so you can like dial them at a high level, especially if you couldn't contact them in three days. A quick question. Um, if you're getting 40 leads and you're doing a lot of realtor.com stuff, unless I'm missing something about how you're doing it. I mean, you're spending 12 to, at least in my market, that'd be 1,200 to 2,000 bucks a month per agent. Is that anything like the kind of money you're spending per agent for leads? It's pretty hefty, I'll put it that way. We convert at a high level. Um, it's all about knowing your lead, how much you're, you are spending, you are spending in different lead sources, what your ROI is on different lead sources. Um, I will say Realtor, Zillow, they're all moving their prices up, right? So you have to go deeper with what you have is number one. Uh, but I think, you know, just at the end of the day with, you know, spend, uh, you just have to know your numbers inside and out, right? So if you have other lead sources, and let's suppose you have Realtor.com, knowing calls per lead, right? So I know our rep calls me all the time. It's like, I got this, 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 and this. I'm like, I don't care what you have. Just send me the numbers, right, because I know what I need to be paying on our lead sources, and I, I get it, they're going up in price, I get it. You know, Zillow, everyone across the board is taking advantage of the, the market, new agents who are spending money they don't know what they're spending on. So you have to know your numbers. So when I tell him, like, I can look at my calls per lead, I'm like, look, you're about $6 per lead over. Like, we're not going down that road. You're not gonna touch, you know, mess with our ROI. You know, so it's, I think it's just knowing your numbers inside and out on what you can spend and where your ROI needs to be to make that lead source like crazy profitable. It's simple and just like repeatable. All right, let's give Dan a huge round of applause. Yay. I went over two minutes. Woo. Woo. <laughs> All right, let me, um, just a couple things uh, before we break here. So the, the, the whole point of this session, and I think it's, it's one of the things about, um, about Real Estate B-School, which is important, and it goes for everyone in this room, whether you're uh, an agent or you're the person paying the bills for these lead sources or you're on the ops team and you're supporting your salespeople to like stop getting in the weeds of these deals, like go out and convert some 
it's all of our responsibility to go really super deep on these lead sources. It really doesn't matter what the lead source is. So to, to the last question, it doesn't matter what the lead source is. We gave up Realtor.com and Zillow 100% um, about nine months ago, and we haven't looked back. We're spending money on other lead sources, and we're tracking it the same exact way. The point is, if you're in business with folks that their business is to just get the price as high as possible, you better make sure you are, I love, I wrote it down, anytime you squeeze a lemon, always more comes out of it. That was something that I've never heard that expression. I don't know if it's an expression or Dan Jones just put his name on the quote there. But literally, if you just turn the lemon the other way and squeeze it, I mean, have you ever gotten to the point where nothing comes out of that lemon? So that's the way we need to treat these leads is, is there more in this thing? And the example, uh, four transactions from a lead which on 99 out of 100 teams, that lead would have been dead and not on Dan's team. He's like, that lead's not dead. My brother can, you know, Mike can, uh, uh, can convert it. And he did. And so that's the whole point of it is that more and more, especially in the next 3, 6, 12 months as the market is shifting, you better make sure everyone on your team understands the importance of going super, um, squeezing the lemon, going super deep uh, on every lead source. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Business Freedom Podcast. If you're getting value from the podcast, would you please leave us a five-star review and share it with others who might benefit from the content I'm sharing. And if you're ready to scale your real estate business sustainably and profitably, there are a couple options for you. If you're doing under 500,000 in annual GCI, our Business Foundations program is for you. Head over to getbusinessfoundations.com. That's getbusinessfoundations.com and learn how you can make the shift from overwhelmed real estate agent to true business owner. If you're doing more than 500,000 in annual team GCI, there's our graduate program designed for top producers and team leaders who want to grow their team and scale their business. If that's you, go to realestatebschool.com and apply for a free business growth strategy session. No matter where you are in your business growth journey, we have the tool system strategies, training and coaching to get you where you want to be. Remember, only you can create your future. So take action now.